Back in 2007, Dunkin' Donuts reformulated their donut recipe in order to introduce trans fat free donuts. But to be honest, I really can't taste the difference. Your taste buds have only five different types of receptors, none of which can recognize fat. And instead of sensing that as a flavor, you'll perceive your food as being oily or greasy. Now the real question is, why do fats have so many names? And what's the difference between a saturated fat and an unsaturated fat, or a trans fat? And why are some of these good for you and some of them bad for you? Well, to understand the differences, you have to understand a little bit about chemistry. And this is because the classification of fats is really based on the chemical structure of the molecules. In particular, you have to know a little bit about carbon. Now, carbon is a special element. An atom of carbon has four electrons in its outer electron orbital. And so an atom of carbon seeks four other electrons to share with other atoms. Now, if we take an atom of carbon and we satisfy its need for four more electrons by adding four hydrogen atoms to it, we've created a stable molecule known as methane or natural gas. But more importantly, the bonds that you create between the atoms represents a form of stored chemical energy. And this chemical energy can be released when those bonds are broken. Now, if you take two carbon atoms bound together, you've made what's known as ethane. If you add another carbon atom, you've created propane. Add another carbon atom, you've created butane. So if we jump up to an eight carbon chain, we have what's known as octane. Now all these molecules are classified as hydrocarbons, and hydrocarbons generally are used for energy. If you take a look at a free fatty acid that you would find within your body, you'll notice that it's also a hydrocarbon. And the only difference is that it carries a chemical group known as a carboxyl group at one end. In order to store fat within your body, you need to take the carboxyl group at the end of a free fatty acid chain and make a chemical connection to another molecule known as glycerol. Now, glycerol has the ability to make this chemical connection to three separate fatty acid chains, and the result is a molecule known as a triglyceride. A triglyceride is the storage form of fat within the body. But not all triglycerides look the same. It really depends on the bonding pattern of the hydrocarbons within the fatty acid chains, and all three can be different. Now, when we take a look at the carbon backbone of a free fatty acid chain, if all of the carbons within that backbone are held together by single bonds, and all of the available bonds outside of that carbon chain are taken up by hydrogens, we refer to this as a saturated fatty acid or a saturated fat. And the result of this is a very linear or straight molecule. Now, if you use this very straight molecule as a storage form of fat, what you create are very solid forms of fat, like animal fat, or like butter. Now, if you take two hydrogens away from neighboring carbon atoms, those carbon atoms will be able to create a double bond between them. And this is what we refer to as an unsaturated fat, a monounsaturated fat. Now, the two remaining hydrogens associated with those carbon atoms will repel each other and cause the molecule to bend or curve slightly. Now, if you use unsaturated fats to build triglycerides, you would imagine that the bent curve molecules don't pack very well together. And so what results are liquid forms of storage fat that we call oil. And this is the way plants and fish tend to store fat. Now, the placement of hydrogen atoms across a double bond is also important. And the types of unsaturated fats that we've been discussing here are referred to as cis fatty acids which really means on the same side. The two remaining hydrogens across a double bond are found on the same side of the molecule. Now, if you take an unsaturated oil and you want to make a saturated fat from it, there's actually an artificial way to do it, which is called hydrogenation. Now, this is the act of heating up the oil and bubbling hydrogen gas through it, which will straighten the fatty acid chain out and basically saturate the whole carbon chain with hydrogen atoms. A byproduct of the hydrogenation process is the creation of partially hydrogenated oils or trans fats. Now this is a situation where one of the two hydrogen atoms across a double bond 
will relocate to the opposite side of the molecule, diagonally across the double bond. And this is what we call a trans fat. Now what this does is straighten the molecule out so it looks more like a saturated fat, but it's still an unsaturated fat because it has double bonds in it. Now because trans fats are artificial, the properties of these straight unsaturated fats are changed slightly, and your body has a very difficult time breaking them down. Now what that means is that they persist for a longer period of time in your bloodstream and aren't cleared as easily as other fats would be. Now recently, the FDA announced that it's going to require the food industry to gradually phase out all trans fats because of their negative health effects. So I guess in the end, I'm glad that my donut doesn't have any more trans fats in it. Now maybe the taste or the texture would change a little bit, but at least I know that when I eat it, my body has the ability to break down all of the ingredients that it's made with. And remember, science bonds us.